So my, one of my issue is that we have several presentations on elderly. Uh, I have the first presentation and then Professor Moti will be discussing autologous transplant for elderly feet patients. Uh, tomorrow we will have a presentation for elderly frail. And uh, tomorrow as well we will have a presentation on geriatric assessment. So uh, basically I will do my best to set the stage for the other speakers and trying not to overlap too much with the, with the next presentations. So I will do some kind of general comments and let me start with this case. Uh, uh, I presented uh, several times and the first time I present, we presented this case was at the MMRF Symposium at HASH uh, 2016 and I had to discuss the case of a 75 year old gentleman. As you can see, this patient had no past medical history, so he is basically uh, uh, elderly uh, fit myeloma patients. And, uh, and then we, as you know, we, we had a vote and the first question was, uh, would you consider this patient eligible for stem cell transplantation? And we had 400, approximately 400 people in the room, and that was a very international audience. And as you can see, 45% were in say that this gentleman was transplant eligible, 41% say no, and 14% say not sure. And, and keep in mind that this gentleman was 75 year old. Then the next question was, what is your initial treatment for these elderly myeloma patients? And as you can see, 32% in favor of VMP or VCD, 11% for lenalidomide dexamethasone, few thalidomide-based regimens, 23% uh, VRD, some CRD, and finally 24% of colleagues proceeded uh, to transplant having some kind of induction therapy, uh, transplantation and, and consolidation. So, uh, so 45% say this gentleman is transplant eligible, but approximately 25% proceed to transplant. But anyway, this, this case tells us that uh, there is a great viability in treatment regimens, and, uh, and we, including transplantation, and it's, it's probably driven by two main factors. The, the first factor is, the, is probably related to frailty and fitness, and another important factor is, is in fact uh, related to the access of drugs. And as we said before, the access of drugs is not the same across different countries. So uh, just a couple of slides on, on, on fit and frail elderly, because this will be discussed tomorrow by uh, Alessandra Larocca from Italy. And uh, I, I would like to show you this uh, very simple algorithm. So this is something we did in the IFM based on the first study. And I am not saying this is the best algorithm. So this is one possible algorithm for frailty. And we looked at uh, age, uh, the Charleston comorbidity index on ECOG, which is something very simple. And we, we define, we try to define only two groups. So the non-frail and the frail patients. And based on this, this score, uh, we were able to separate uh, quite uh, nicely uh, the frail and the non-frail. So this is the PFS shown on the left-hand side and the survival shown on the right-hand side. And for example, if you look at the survival, uh, the median survival for the frail was approximately 40 months, uh, which is approximately 3.5 years. And it was uh, 70 months, so approximately six years for the non-frail patients. So it's, it's one potential algorithm, but you may find uh, uh, others and, and probably many others in, in the future as well. If you look at treatment discontinuation, treatment discontinuation was more frequent in the frail patients. Uh, also in line with this, uh, it has something to do with frailty and fitness. I would like to share with you this uh, a uh, recent paper published in the British Journal of Hematology, and this is the patient outcomes in, in real world practice. So it's a total of approximately 5,000 patients. Uh, Two-thirds of these patients are elderly, 
And these patients have been uh, investigated in, the, in Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Switzerland, and the UK. And, and the, the point I would like to make is just to say that if you look at, so this is the first line. So I will not go through everything, but this is the first line. So 95% of patients got, got uh, some kind of frontline therapy, but only 61% of patients got second-line therapy, which means that uh, a, a, a substantial proportion of patients did not get any second-line. And, uh, and this is not only driven by frailty, but as you can expect, the, the elderly patients and the frail elderly patients uh, some of them will not be able to receive a second-line treatment, so they will progress undied before receiving any second-line therapy. So uh, the next point I would like to make is the, besides the frailty, is the, the high risk versus the standard risk myeloma patients uh, regarding the, the elderly patients. So this is, these are the, the recommendations for treatment uh, done for high-risk myeloma patients, and this was the International Myeloma Working Group Consensus Panel. Uh, so this was presented at, uh, in New Delhi uh, a few weeks ago. And so basically for all transplant ineligible patients, it was said that uh, these patients may benefit from an imid PI combination regimen, it was said that you, you may want to limit exposure to low-dose alkylating agents, so you may agree or, or disagree on this. Sequence versus combination regimens. Some form of continuous therapy or maintenance. And, and finally, emerging data of, uh, on HDAC inhibitors and, and obviously on monoclonal antibodies in primary management. So these are the recommendations for the high-risk uh, myeloma transplant ineligible patients. Iris being defined based on genetics, but being also defined based on some clinical features and also defined uh, based on uh, uh, the, the effect of, of therapy. So, for example, patients refractory to an imidon PI combination regimens are definitely high-risk uh, myeloma patients. And, but when you go to the, not to the, the, the entire cohort of high-risk patients, when you go to the frail elderly, uh, that's just a nightmare for these patients. And uh, I found this slide, this slide was part of uh, Dr. Zamani presentation at, at IMW. So she had to discuss uh, primary plasma cell leukemia. And uh, so my presentation is not on primary plasma cell leukemia, but I think this slide is very informative. So this, this is PCL. So this is basically iris myeloma. And when you look at uh, Frontline therapies, these are the transplant eligible. So you will find a lot of options. These are the elderly fit. You will find some options. These are the elderly frail. So you will find only lenalidomide dexamethasone and bortezomib dexamethasone. At the time of relapse, these are the fit patients and these are the frail patients. So basically, for the frail patients with iris myeloma, in fact, in this study for, with PCL, you will move from Lendex or bortezomib dexamethasone to palliation. So which is a way to say that the frail iris myeloma patients, they still do very, very badly, unfortunately. And so these are the, re the recommendations of IMW for the frail patients. And uh, as you can see, uh, uh, so this is basically good work, but... Uh, you may also say that these recommendations are relatively weak. So definition of frailty, so, some, uh, so this is IMWG frailty score. Uh, this is the German revised comorbidity score. You, you may find others. And uh, as you can see, very few recommendations, in fact. Those adjustments based on age and frailty all of transplant based on frailty rather than age. So nothing extremely uh, inspiring for the frail high-risk uh, myeloma patients. Uh, going back to treatment regimens, uh, this is basically uh, the landscape and, and some perspectives for the elderly. So these are the uh, 
approved regimens, the VMP, MPT, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone. These are the major studies establishing these standards of care. And, uh, and these, are the, these are the new ongoing or recently completed studies. Uh, moving from lenalidomide and dexamethasone, you will find the VRD, uh, you will find lenalidomide dexamethasone in combination with either ixazomib, elotuzumab, or daratumumab. This is the VMP daratumumab study, and this is the client study investigating MP in combination with cafilzomib. So some of these studies have been reported. So the VRD, we have some VRD studies. Uh, the client study has been reported uh, recently at IMW. Uh, other studies uh, will be presented uh, at the end of this year or in, in 2018. Uh, these are the, the new uh, ongoing lenalidomide dexamethasone-based studies. So this is the elotuzumab study investigating continuous elotuzumab in combination with lenalidomide and dexamethasone. Uh, this is the ixazomib study, which is... Uh, uh, quite similar, except the fact that this dexamethasone is discontinued at 18 months, and then patients proceed with a lower dose of ixazomib and a lower dose of lenalidomide. And this is the daratumumab study, so the Maya study, oh, sorry for that. So the Maya study, uh, having uh, uh, not exactly continuous lenalidomide, dexamethasone, and daratumumab, because lenalidomide and dexamethasone is discontinued at two years, and then patients proceed with daratumumab uh, continuous therapy uh, alone. So these studies will be uh, our all registration studies, as, uh, obviously, and uh, they, they will probably uh, change uh, uh, at least a little bit the, the clinical outcome for elderly patients. So what about uh, regimens for the fit patients? And uh, uh, I, I would like to mention a couple of regimens. So the first one is the VRD. Uh, VRD is likely, is mostly a regimen for fit elderly. Uh, you may say that some, uh, some very elderly may get some VRD, some light VRD, for example, but it's mostly a regimen for fit elderly. So this is the SPOC study, which has been published in the Lancet uh, at the beginning of this year. <coughs> so this is VRD eight cycles followed by lenalidomide dexamethasone. And as you know, there was a PFS benefit and this PFS benefit translated into uh, a, a statistically significant survival benefit. So the median survival moving from 64 months to 75. So VRD is, uh, is quite uh, well established. Uh, this is true for the younger patients. This is true for some elderly patients as well. And, uh, and, and this is also recognized uh, as part of the, the Mayo Clinic recommendations. So this, these are the Mayo Clinic recommendations. And as you can see, these transplant ineligible patients, they will get, uh, everybody will get some VRD, uh, except the uh, patients over 75 and frail patients will get lenalidomide and dexamethasone. And this will be followed by uh, either lenalidomide dexamethasone for one year or some bortezomib-based maintenance for a minimum of one year for patients with intermediate risk or iris myeloma. Uh, besides the, beyond the VRD, we, we may find, uh, at least in the U.S., I'm not sure we will find it in, uh, in non-U.S. countries, but you may find some uh, Carfilzomib in combination with lenalidomide and dexamethasone. This has been mentioned by uh, Dr. Cavo previously. Uh, this, could be, this could be a nice regimen for fit elderly, but uh, I would say you probably have to be fit uh, because uh, I'm not sure that the frail uh, will be able to stay uh, or to receive this regimen. And, and, and finally, this uh, carfilzomib regimen provides a, a very nice uh, efficacy, and uh, virtually all patients got a response, and as you can see, the, the PFS was quite uh, favorable as well. So the fit elderly may get some VRD. Some of them may, will likely get some uh, CAROD, uh, at least in some countries in the, in the next uh, few years. Uh, if you want to talk about the elderly fit, you, you, have to, you have to discuss uh, transplant eligibility, and this will be part of, the, of Dr. Moti's presentation. 
And uh, and this is mainly based on the fact that we 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 have shown that uh, transplant is still a standard of care based on the IFM study and the European Myeloma Network study. Uh, we know that. Um, uh, autologous stem cell transplantation is routinely done in some elderly patients, at least in some centers, and at least in some countries. And, uh, for example, we know that uh, our German colleagues do routinely transplant in uh, elderly and some uh, very elderly uh, fit myeloma patients. So this is feasible, but uh, you do not know exactly if it is uh, what will be the role for transplant in elderly. And... Uh, this is the, the, the recently published uh, VRD and transplant IFM study. And this is to share with you that uh, as part of this paper, so this study was done in young uh, myeloma patients, and the benefit in terms of PFS is, is 14 months. So if you assume that the benefit in terms of PFS is 14 months for the young patients, you may want to discuss what could be the benefit for the elderly. You may say that for patients over the age of 65, and especially for patients over the age of 70, your benefit will be likely less. So if it is less than 14 months, what, what, would, you, what would you be happy to see for very elderly? So for example, if you get only a seven months benefit in terms of PFS for patients 70 to 75 years, would you proceed to transplant at the time we may have some uh, VRD daratumumab or, or, or even lenalidomide dexamethasone daratumumab for elderly patients? So this is something um, which has probably to be discussed. And uh, this is a slide I made uh, uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, the, the, the title is, do we need a transplant study in elderly fit myeloma patients? If yes, is it still possible? And so this is the... If you, you may say yes, so there is no clear answer on the benefit of transplant in elderly. Uh, there is no randomized study in the era of new agents. But you may say no. You may say that uh, uh, these two studies are positive, but we are not totally sure that all young patients benefit from transplant. And, for example, Dr. Cavo says that uh, in the future, if you have a standard risk myeloma patient and if you can achieve MRD negativity at 10 minus 6, for example, you are not totally sure that there is a need for transplant in a frontline setting. So if, you, if there is no need for transplant in a frontline setting in some young patients, would you say that we need transplant in elderly? You may also say that the PFS benefit in, for the young patient is 14 months and it will be less in elderly. And finally, you, you may say that the, the control arm will be excellent. So if you do, if you can do, uh, if you can have a four drug platform for elderly fit, having a PI, an IMID, uh, and a CD38 monoclonal antibody, for example, your control arm, having some kind of VTD daratumumab or VRD daratumumab or ixazomib lendex daratumumab, whatever, your control arm will be excellent. And finally, the risk uh, may overweigh the benefit, especially for patients 70 to 75 years. So it's uh, just a way to say that the benefit of transplant in elderly assuming that these elderly patients are fit patients, is questionable and may need or may not need a new study. So regimens and studies for the frail patients. So uh, uh, this is not a very new idea. So Dr. Palumbo published uh, uh, some years ago uh, this uh, stratification of myeloma patients, and, uh, and he was uh, able to define... Uh, uh, different regimens for the fit, the intermediate, and the frail patients. And he said basically for the, the fit, these patients uh, will get VMP or MPT. So these are intermediate patients with lenalidomide dexamethasone or bortezomib dexamethasone. And these are frail patients with a lower dose of lenalidomide and a lower dose of bortezomib. So of course this slide would have been to, would have to be updated because we will get CD38 antibodies, because we will get new proteasome inhibitors, for example. But in fact, the idea, the concept is still valid. So you may have different regimens for fit and frail patients. And, and, uh, and I said regimens and, and studies. And the good news is that we, we will have some academic studies for frail elderly. 
and as such, this is something this is something new. These are not registration studies, so the goal is not to make approved a new drug for myeloma. The, the goal is to say, and the concept is to say, that the frail patients may need specific studies. And at least two groups, and this is the case for the MRC, and this is the case for the IFM as well, at least two groups started to design specific studies for the frail patients. So this is the myeloma 14 study. The study is called fitness, which is something interesting. I'm not sure, so Dr. Cook is in the room. I, I'm not sure the... the this is still totally valid, but I think the concept is, is, is very important. So they say basically that the, you have a, a, one pathway is called reactive and the other pathway is called adaptive. So these patients will get non-adjust chemotherapy and, uh, and so the doses of drug will be reduced in case of adverse events. And in the other pathway, the adaptive pathway, uh, you will start with different doses of drugs for the fit and the frail patients. So the dose of cyclophosphamide, the dose of ixazomib, and the dose of, uh, of lenalidomide will be different across frailty subgroups. So, and then patients will be randomized for maintenance between lenalidomide and lenalidomide ixazomib. So uh, the, 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 the goal is not to say, so no study is perfect. The goal is not to say that this study is perfect and probably this study will change a little bit or will be modified, something like this. But the concept of, of a specific study for the frail patients is important. And IFM did the same. And we, we, we designed a, a new study Based on, the, based on the results of the first study, we say that uh, the control arm is lenalidomide and low-dose dexamethasone given continuously, and the investigational arm is lenalidomide in combination with subcutaneous daratumumab with no dexamethasone, or, or more precisely, with a very limited dose of dexamethasone, so patients will get dexamethasone for the first couple of cycles and then patients will proceed without dexamethasone. So this is an almost dexamethasone-free regimen. So the way is to say that these frail patients may, may benefit from uh, the combination of an oral drug, which is lenalidomide, and subcutaneous daratumumab, and hopefully this regimen will be uh, effective and will be safe for the frail patients. Uh, avoiding dexamethasone, which is uh, frequently not so well tolerated in the frail patients. So this is my final slide, and this is just a way to illustrate that uh, we may have and we will have studies for, for frail uh, myeloma patients. So this is the IFM uh, during the last meeting. Thank you very much for your attention.